While the White House is celebrating, it's the markets that will have the last laugh. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today in a story where good news is bad news, and the beginning of it actually doesn't make any sense. Well, let's head over to Bloomberg where we pick up this headline where the U.S. private jobs plunged last month on Omicron ADP data showed as business payrolls slumped 301,000, the most since April 2020. And the data precedes Friday's monthly employment report from the Labor Department, which is currently forecast to show that private payrolls increased by 113,000 in January. And the ADP figures don't always follow the same pattern as the Labor Department's data. And now for the part that doesn't make any sense because what we do understand is while they don't follow each other exactly, they do tend to trend the same direction, which would suggest a weaker than expected non-farm payroll report. And then the White House comes out and says this, that the White House warns latest jobs data will be ugly due to Omicron, as we reported earlier this week, as January jobs data was collected as U.S. Omicron cases soared. And here we see as several White House officials have teed up Friday's report with warnings, saying that a week when surveys were taken for the January payroll numbers was the height of illness absences in the aftermath of the holidays. And Federal Reserve officials deliver similar words of caution. And Brian Deese, the director of President Joe Biden's National Economic Council, said the numbers could be confusing as COVID illnesses are recording as job losses. And the real story is that Brian is right. The numbers were confusing because on Friday we got this headline. The U.S. jobs surge defies Omicron, puts more pressure on the Fed as employers added 467,000 jobs in January above all estimates. An unemployment rate ticked up to 4%, while hourly wages jumped. Leaving the question, as everyone's asking, is how did this happen? Well, let's dig into the story and see if we can make sense of where these jobs came from when nobody thought they were going to be there. A broad-based 467,000 gain in non-farm payrolls, which exceeded all economists' projections, followed a 709,000 total upward revision to the prior two months, which is great news, the Labor Department figures showed Friday. The unemployment rate ticked up 4%, and average hourly earnings jumped. And so far, this is great. And here you can see this upside surprise with consistent job gains as the median estimate was well below that, and the unemployment rate is rising slightly, but still remaining at very low levels. A variety of factors, including Omicron, seasonal adjustment, which is a very two key words here, and the way workers who are homesick are factored in make interpreting the January data challenging. And that is actually an understatement. But the increase in employment, along with substantial upward revisions the prior month, illustrate newfound momentum in the labor market. All the while, businesses are trying to retain as many workers as they can, including those hired for the holiday season. The report suggests demand for labor remains robust and further reinforces Fed Chair Jerome Powell's description last week of the labor market is strong, with workers hard to come by. Seasonal laughs in January were smaller than usual. And that is true because usually what happens in January is that companies will lay off those seasonal workers. Well, we're seeing a trend now is they're hanging on to them. But let's keep on with the story because we still got to figure out where these jobs came from. The figures also validate the central bank's intentions to raise interest rates in March to combat the highest inflation in nearly 40 years. And that will pose a big problem for the Biden administration. Treasury yield surge in the S&P 500 was mixed. And that actually doesn't make any sense because when you look at it, there's absolutely really no relationship between the long bond, which found itself crashing or crashing higher due to high frequency trading algorithms, as we've talked about in our show the other day. But you'll notice the federal funds rate in blue, it can rise and the long bond yield can actually fall. And there is actually multiple cases where the federal fund rate funds rate rises and yields collapse as the long bond actually prices in future growth and inflation ex- expectations, whereas federal funds rate is controlled by the Fed, and the Fed has no control over the long bond anymore. That relationship ended sometime in the 1980s. But let's keep going with a story that still doesn't have any answers yet, and let's see where we go because we're going to take a detour from Bloomberg and head over to Zero Hedge, which is here's what's behind today's stunning payroll beat. Then the plot thickens, and indeed, the one thing that analysts apparently forgot when they were submitting their forecast for January's payrolls is that this month when the BLS adjusts data for the past 10 years is part of its population estimate revisions, which impacts both the household and, more important, the establishment surveys. And But digging deeper shows that it was not just an ordinary seasonal adjustment. As South Bay Research notes in his NFP postmortem, quote, there's never been a January seasonal adjustment of this magnitude, well, and visually, There wasn't, and you can see it's completely off the charts. 
And what this suggests is if we normalize a January seasonal adjustment as it should have been, the payroll numbers is some 309,000 lower or ends up being 166,000 right on top of expectations. And so what you see happened is the Bureau of Labor Statistics did this wild seasonal adjustment on top of its annual adjustment and stacked them on top of the payroll report to make it look much bigger than normal. Now the BLS, if you're wondering, doesn't go back and take their adjustments and smooth it over the months it should. It just says, hey, we were off by all these numbers and we'll just stack them right here. And so of course, now what we're hearing is the White House, which again, you would think they might have known this was coming, which is interesting because we do know a president doesn't get the report until the day before, but the own his own economic advisor was warning that the report could be bad, suggesting that none of this actually makes any sense. But the truth is the jobs report was much worse than the headlines suggest. And that has implications for the economy. But let's keep going for the story because it seals the deal for a March rate hike, said Ryan Sweet, the head of monetary policy research at Moody's Analytics, who added that the chance of a half point increase is still unlikely. The Fed is going to take away from this that the economy is barreling toward full employment. This will make it much more difficult for them to engineer a soft landing. And if you're concerned about your portfolio in a hard landing, well, you shouldn't be. Be sure to check out Portfolio Shield. You'll be glad you did. There's a link above and the description below. Let's continue with the story and see where we go because after the adjustment to reflect the updated population estimates, the labor force participation rate, the share of the population is working or looking for work increased 62.2%, which is fantastic and gains for both men and women. And without that impact, it would have held steady at just under 62%. But what confuses me and what I find interesting is the labor force participation rate is in blue and I've inverted the Fed's balance sheet or monetary base in red and what you'll notice is there's a gap here suggesting that either the fed is way off and needs to unwind this balance sheet or we're going to have a nasty recession and the labor force participation rate is going to come crashing down well one of the two is a more probable outcome which we'll see soon and I think you know which one it is too. Let's keep going because meanwhile, average hourly earnings rose 0.7% in January, the most since the end of 2020, and 5.7% from a year ago, further fanning concerns about the persistence of inflation. The average work week dropped, which actually took away from a lot of that income. Now, we do know there's no relationship between wages and future inflation. We've already busted that myth, but nevertheless, policymakers believe it's true, but the decline in hourly hour, hours worked, does have a significant impact on paychecks. Even though workers made more when they were there, they spent less time there, which had an offsetting effect. But let's keep going because the report included revisions to total non-farm employment as part of the department's annual benchmark revision. Payrolls were revised up 217,000 for all of 2021. And here you can see those revisions that the Zero Hedge article talked about being stacked up onto the January payroll report. The jobs report is good news for the White House, which has been tempering expectations ahead of time out of concern that the Omicron variant would negatively affect the data. Again, somewhat baffling. The median estimate in a Bloomberg survey of economists called for 125,000 advance and said, again, suggests that how did the White House not actually know that this was coming? Or maybe they did. It doesn't make any sense. But either way, we have the big payroll report. And this is a story of now how good news becomes bad news. And a lot of people don't understand this. But check this out as we'll head over to the Wall Street Journal, who gets it right by seeing a strong jobs report points to likely Fed rate rises in March and May as hiring shrugs off COVID-19 case spike and underscores tightening labor markets. And what we can see here is in this chart where you take the consumer price index and the federal funds rate, and you'll notice when the two start to peak. And you'll notice whether there's these little gray bars and those gray bars. Well, those are recessions. Now, what you're probably thinking is, Steve, it's not that big of a deal because we're just entering perhaps a tightening cycle. But what we're missing, the point is that most of the last expansion since March of 2020 was due to fiscal stimulus, and that's gone. And as part of this, while the Fed may not be raising the funds rate, they are unwinding their balance sheet. And what we've learned over since quantitative easing one, two, three, and now whatever iteration we're on now, is that when the Fed does quantitative easing, it's high powered and has major impacts. So the withdrawal of it will also have impacts, perhaps why the stock market is struggling. And in a week from now, 
on Valentine's Day, the Fed's going to drop to $30 billion a month of purchases, and that's expected to have a big impact. But what the issue here is, this big payroll report puts Powell in a perfect position to tighten at the March meeting and continue with the balance sheet roll-off and perhaps enter a tightening cycle. And Mr. President, I understand you're celebrating now, but a Fed tightening cycle and high inflation, that's not going to be good news for your administration or the economy or any of us. And with that, I'm Steve Ann Meter. Thanks for watching. Bye now. The content of this video is provides educational information only is not intended to provide investor advice. This video is not to be construed as a recognition or solicitation by our selling security, financial rate instrument, or participate in any particular trading strategy. This video was paired by Steve Van Meter personal capacity. Please express this video that I do not affect the Atlas Financial Advising or Steve Van Meter Financial.